members, you are welcome to our lesson. As usual, Thomas is saying he's also new. I take this opportunity to welcome all new members. I take this opportunity to welcome you. You are most welcome to our lesson. This is CRE. I'm teacher Mary, and this program is sponsored by Edify. So when you are here, you just relax and we learn. So as usual, I want us to start our lesson with a prayer. We are Christians, so I want us to start our lesson with a prayer. And I can see people have already, already raised their hands. They want to pray. Let me see someone who's going to bless us this morning. I want to pick on, uh, let me see. Let me see, I pick on who? The chance has landed on Ervin. Yes, Ervin. Ervin, good morning. Good morning, teacher. Ervin? Morning, teacher. Can Ervin? You hear me? Yes, morning. Good morning. Morning, teacher. Ervin, how are you? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ervin, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ervin is not talking. Could there be any problem? Let me pick on another one. Let me pick on Mary Angela and Immaculate. Mary Angela and Immaculate, can you pray for us? Mary Angela. Hello. Mary Angela and Immaculate, can you lead us in a word of prayer? What? Is it the sound is not on? Don't do that. Can you hear me, members? Because I don't know why I cannot hear you. I can hear you, Peter Mary. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Now it's okay. Okay, let me ask Melody. Melody, you pray for us. Melody? Melody, you pray for us. Melody? Hurry. We're, we're hearing Elvin. Let Elvin pray. Yes, Melody is going to pray for us. Yes? Let's number souls for a prayer. Yes. Dear God, we thank you for today and the chance that you've given us to come all here and gather for this CRE lesson. Please, Lord, help us to understand this lesson and also put it in mind so that when they give us activities, we can pass them very well. Guide our teacher when she's teaching us and also us to help us to be attentive. In your mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Merode, for that wonderful prayer. We are blessed in Jesus' name. As I told you, this is CRE, and I want us to first review where we stopped last time. New members, we are studying a topic in senior one, and it is called rituals and celebrations. Members, you can put down your hands. You first put down your hands, and then I will call, call on you if I have a question. 
So to the new members, we are studying a topic called rituals and celebrations. We defined rituals, we looked at different celebrations carried out in our Christian churches. We talked about baptism as one of the rituals. And we also talked about the use of having a name. And last time when we met, it was Friday, like today, we talked about how the ritual of baptism is done in our different churches. If I can still recall, we said that before you are baptized, because we said that in the early church, they could only baptize adults. But we said that today in our churches, even young ones, young ones, the level of even one day, two days, that kid can be baptized. And we gave out reasons. And we also talked about how it is done. Members, we said that today, because they baptize young ones, there is a need of a God parent. And many of you, you told me that you have God parents. And I asked you, remember, what's the use of having a God parent? It's because that young kid cannot easily tell or cannot easily say or cannot stand on her own to repent his or her sins. So therefore, those good parents stand in for you. And we also looked at ways how baptism is done. We say that in the area church, they use it dipping people in water. But today in our churches, they use that symbol of water by putting it on your forehead in some of the churches. But we also say that even dipping is still carried out. So new members, that's where we have reached. Opia is asking who is the God parent? Who is a God parent? Members, let me throw that question to you because the other time we talked about God parents. We talked about God parents. Yes, Martin, who is a God parent? A Martin? God parent. Yes. A good parent is a person who takes care of you. Who takes care of you? Yes. What is his work at baptism? What is the work of a good parent at baptism? Yes, he can take care of you. Why do they need a good parent when someone is being baptized? Yes. Yes, I don't remember. You don't remember. Yeah. Emma said, Do you remember why we need God parents at the baptism? Yes. Yes. Mm, what are they for? God parents are the people who stand in for you during baptism because you cannot repent for your own sins. Exactly. Very good, Timothy. I told you that at the baptism, we must, before you are baptized, you must cleanse yourself of the original sin. And people were asking me about the original sin. I told you how we acquired the original sin from the Bible. So at the baptism, someone is supposed to repent first before you are baptized. And therefore, because they are baptizing a young kid, who cannot even talk, who even doesn't know what is taking place, then they require you to have 
God parents. And those God parents stand in for you. There are certain words they say. There are certain questions they are asked and then they answer on your behalf. So that is the work of the God parents. They stand on your behalf and say that they have repented and that they will help you to grow in a Christian way. So that's why someone was telling us that they are to help you grow. So that is what we learned last time. Someone is asking that, you, can your real parents become God parents? Members, this one is done differently by different denominations. But what I know before they baptize you, then you must have God parents. Let me see. Do we have some people? Do we have some denominations where they baptize without God parents? Let me see. Do we have some people among you who were baptized? And when you ask your parents, they tell you you did not have God parents? Chirabo, Esther, your hand is up. Chirabo. Chirabo, Esther? Yes? Cleopatra. Cleopatra? Now her hand is down. If you don't have a question, if you don't have, you just put down your hand. Let me ask Aloysius. Yes, Aloysius. Aloysius? No one. Cerebo Esther, I unmuted and then you did not talk. I begin the years. Uh, I think hmm? yes, I begin. I begin. I was also the same. I was baptized, I think, when I was 12, but I was never given a good parent or something. I begin. You don't have a good parent, yes. Is it true? Yes, you were baptized in which church? Catholic church. No, Protestant church. I'm a Baptist. Come again. I'm a Baptist. You are a Baptist. Yes. This is what I told you that different denominations do it differently. But according to our Christian teaching, when you are to be baptized, then especially in Catholics and Protestants, you must have a God parent let me hear from rita yes rita rita but rita in other words what am i trying to say that baptism is a very important sacrament in as far as christianity is concerned and why are we baptized i told you we are baptized to be members of the christian union yes there there someone called it there yes there <laughs> When you put up your hand and I pick on you, give us your point. Chilabo Elizabeth. Sure, I never understood. Excuse me, sure, I never understood the question. I would never like understood. you to repeat. Yeah, I, I, I would like you to I would like you to repeat for me the question. Yes. Some people were saying that what is the work of God's parents? I would go parent. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So to me, what a good parent, eh? Yes. A good parent helps me to know more about God and helps me to, to gain more strength about God. Exactly. That is what I was telling them. 
that why do we need God parents at the baptism? They stand in for us and they promise to make you grow as a Christian. Are we together? Yes, but some teacher. people are saying that they were baptized and they never had God parents. I'm saying that could be true, but with Protestants and Catholics, you must have a God parent. Mm -hmm. Members, we must agree that we don't belong to the same belief, but according to Christianity. When I talk about that, I'm referring to Catholicism and Protestants. You must have a God parent. Yes, there. Then, yes, then. Then this is my last chance to ask you. You put up your hand. I click on you. You don't talk. This is because of network. So, members, today, our topic today is. Someone is saying that I meet those guys making noise. So members, can you please observe silence? Help us not to create noise for us. So members, today, today, someone is asking, did Jesus have God, did he have a God parent? No. We, we also, we talked about the baptism of Jesus and we know what happened when Jesus was baptized. Members, I'm still, I, I, I know we looked at that picture and when Jesus was being baptized, there was that kind of trinity that showed up when Jesus was being baptized in River Jordan. Members, you still remember what we read? There was a voice from heaven, that one, represented the voice from the father. Then there was a dove that was the Holy Spirit and Jesus himself was the son. Therefore, there was that kind of trinity when Jesus was being baptized. So members, today I want us to look at Holy Communion. I want us to look at Holy Communion. This is our topic today, and I want to tell you that in our brief as Christians, this is also a very important sacrament that is carried out in our churches. As Christians, we have that sacrament of baptism, and also we have this sacrament called the Holy Communion. Members, I have a picture displayed on the screen. Can you see this picture? Can you be able to see this picture on the screen? Members, who can tell us what this picture displayed on the screen? Yes. 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 Proceed. Holy Communion. Yes. Pro yes. Yes, Nakato? Yes, teacher. Yes. The picture above yes. represents 
represents the Holy Communion because we can see yes. a revelant, a yes. revelant, yes, Fe feeding a, 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 let me call her a sister. Yes. The, the Holy Communion blood. Thank you, thank you, Nakato. Nakato is telling us that he, she has seen a reverend giving a sister bread. Let me see if others are seeing the same. Yes, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth, what can you see from that picture? Queen Elizabeth. We have a picture displayed. What does it show? Yes, Agasha Parvin. Parvin? Agasha. I don't know why people cannot respond very quickly. Is it because of, is the problem with me? Yes, now I took Elizabeth. Elizabeth? Yes, teacher. Yes, what can you see in that picture? I'm seeing the bishop feeding the sister the bread. Elizabeth, you see, is she's saying that she's seeing a bishop. That is her view that she's seeing a bishop, and that bishop is giving bread to a sister. People can see things in different ways. Yes. Elizabeth has seen a bishop. Yes, Sam. Sam Emukok. Yes, Sam. Sam, what can I you can, see? I can see a priest administering the, the body of Christ to a to a, to a sister. Very good. Some can see a priest administering Holy Eucharist or Holy Communion. Very good. So members, now that you can identify that picture, then that takes us to a question. That takes us to a question. What is Holy Communion? What is Holy Communion. People have ever seen priests administering Holy Communion. So, to you as a Christian, what is Holy Communion? Should I assume all these hands want to give me the answer? What is Holy Communion? Members who are from different churches have different views about Holy Communion. So what is Holy Communion? Yes, Namatov Jovia. Namatov. Namatov Jovia. Namatov. What is Holy Communion? Yes, Rusty. Rest Sheila. This is when a person goes, goes to get a cup of bread and wine. Very good. Sheila is saying this is when a person is going to get bread and wine. So when you go to the shop and you get bread and wine, that is Holy Communion? Yes? What type of bread? What type of... Yes, let me see. Let me see when you go to the shop and you get bread, that is Holy Communion. Yes, Rita, what is Holy Communion to you? Yes, Rita. Rita. Rita's hand is up. People share in the Holy Communion, but what is it? Yes, Rita. Let me check in the chat room. These people cannot easily answer me. I don't know what has happened.
People are saying, teacher, me. Yes. What is holy communion? That is my question. Aloysius. Aloysius. What is holy communion? Holy communion is when someone receives bread in form of um, the body of Christ and and wine in form of the blood of Christ from the priest. Very good. That is Aloysius. So members, when we talk about this sacrament of holy communion, we are referring to the sharing. Yes, let me ask, let me, before I give you the answer, people are saying, teacher me, teacher me, let me also hear from you. Yes, Rita. 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 Oh my God, people have answers, but I don't know what has happened. Wangora Benjamin. Wangora. Wangora Benjamin. In a form of bread and wine. Yes, Wangora. The blood and body of Christ. The blood and body of Jesus Christ. Jesse is saying, teacher, give me chance. Let me give you chance this time because people want to give me answers. Let me see. When people giving answers, that is what is learning. Yes, yes, let me see. Kasutu, Kasuti Edi. Kasutu Edi. Kasutu Edi. Eddie? Yes, Eddie. Give us your view. What is Holy Communion? Kasuti? Eddie. Maybe, maybe, members, there's a problem in network. Let me pick on another one. Yes, Joseph Elvis. You know. Joseph? <laughs> Uh -huh. Hello. Yes. Are you hearing me? Hello. Yes. Yes. Hold it. Hello. Hello. This is the. Hello. Which I'm answering. I'm answering. Yes. yes. Hello. This is the sharing Hello. of bread and wine by Christians to remember the death and resurrection of Christ by a priest yes. or revelant. By a priest or revelant. Yes, Yes. This is the sharing of bread and wine by Christians to remember the death and resurrection of Christ by a priest or reverend. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is what we call Hori Communion. He has brought it up very well. When we talk about Hori Communion, we are referring to the act of sharing of bread and wine by Christians to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, when we talk about the word communion, just the word communion, what does it mean? The word communion simply means togetherness, togetherness, coming together. So when Christians come together and they share the bread and when they share bread and wine, they are trying to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This is a very important sacrament carried out by Christians. It is done in commemoration of Jesus' last supper, which he had with his disciples. Members, we are going to refer to the Bible and we see 
what took place in the Bible. But when we talk about holy communion, this is what happens. Christians come together to remember, to share in the blood and body of Christ. So if you can read on my screen, the holy communion, holy communion is the sharing of blood and wine by Christians to remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I've told you the word communion means coming together of Christians, togetherness of Christians and God. That is when you come close to God. When you come close to God by remembering what his son went through for us. Thank you, members. Now that we have known what holy communion means, I have another question. I want us to go step by step so that we understand what holy communion means. So my second question is, what does the ritual symbolize? What does the ritual of holy communion symbolize? What does it symbolize? What does it symbolize? What does it symbolize? Yes. We have ever seen people taking Holy Communion, and I know some of you take Holy Communion. So what does it symbolize? Yes, let me see. Christians, what does this act of Holy Communion symbolize? What does it symbolize in our Christian churches. Yes, members, do we take Holy Communion in our churches? Yes, because some people are telling me when they identified the picture. So that means they know what takes place in our churches. So what does this act of Holy Communion symbolize? Cut seven. Yes, cut seven. Cut seven. Yes, cut seven. Cut seven, can you hear me? Yes. Teacher Mary, Teacher Mary, there are some good answers in the chat. Can you please read? Yes, let us maybe read from the chat. Because people, when I pick on them, yes, where Ashan is saying that it symbolizes the blood and body of Christ. Thank you, Uwera. That is her. She's telling us that it symbolizes blood and body of Christ. We share the bread and wine. Therefore, they symbolize the blood and body of Christ. What symbolizes the blood? What symbolizes the blood? Let me see. Someone has told us that it symbolizes the blood and body of Christ. So those are two things. We have the bread and we have the wine. So of the two, what symbolizes the blood? If I can read from your church, this is saying wine. Patience is saying wine. Thank you, thank you very much. When we are having holy communion, the wine symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us on the cross. Very good. Then what about what symbolizes the body? 
what symbolizes the body. Chilabo is saying bread, just a bread, very good, very good, holy bread. So what is administered in our holy communion? It is bread and wine. Therefore, the bread represents the body of Christ that was crucified for us. And then the wine represents the blood of Jesus Christ. Are we together members? So those two things, bread and wine, we take them in remembrance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. He shed blood on the cross, that is the wine we take, and his body was crucified. So the two represent the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, thank you very much. That is what we call Holy Communion. And it is a very important sacrament in our church. In other, when we talk about the word Eucharist, it is a Greek word. Members, this word comes from Greek. It is a Greek word which means Eucharistia. I don't know whether you have ever heard that. It is a Greek word called Eucharistia. What does it mean? It means like thanksgiving. We are celebrating, we are appreciating what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. So in other words, this holy communion is a central act. It is a central act in our church worship. It is a central act in our church worship. I cannot say that all people practice in this, but we emphasize that Christians, if you are a Christian, if you know you are a Christian, then you believe in Jesus Christ. And all of us who believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in Holy Eucharist. Are we together? We believe in Holy Eucharist. So that is what it means by Holy Communion. Members, I have another question for you. I have another question for you. The third question is, why do you think this Holy Communion is important? Is it of any importance to us as Christians? Is it important? Why do you think this holy communion, is it important? Yes, Bob is saying, teacher, holy communion strengthens the faith of believers. Thank you. That is his answer. He's saying it is very important to Christians because it strengthens. Yes, let me see. Let me see. People have answers. Hmm. Tasha and Trasse. Tasha and Trasse. Do you think holy communion is important? Yes, Tasha. It helps to it helps to remind us that Jesus mm -hmm. died for our sins. Very good. That is Tasha. When we are celebrating, when we are taking in the bread and wine, we remember that Jesus died for us. Very good. Let me see. Let me. Yes, Timothy. Timothy, do you think Holy Communion is important? Yes. Yes. How important is it? 
I think Holy Communion is important because it helps us to grow spiritually. Because after Holy Communion, yes. then like your God, your God parents will tell you that the the rest of your life is all up to you because we have helped you grow up to this stage. So it helps us grow spiritually in our religions. Very good. Timothy has brought a new thing. He has again mentioned about our godparents. Members, when you are baptized, I told you, because you cannot repent of your sins there, and then you have to have godparents. So before you are confirmed, in our Christian churches, before you get holy communion, you must be confirmed. Confirmed of what? What are you confirmed for? Why do they want you to be confirmed? It's because they want you to stand for yourself now and say, I'm done with sins. Therefore, in our Christian churches, after confirmation, then you can easily share in the holy Eucharist, in this meal. Therefore, in other words, what does it mean that now you can easily say you are a true Christian? Now the work of the godparents now here, it is like they are relieved because now you are a grown up kid and you can stand on your own and say, I'm done with my sins. Therefore, Holy Communion is very important. It strengthens our faith. As a Christian, that's when you can easily say, I am a true Christian. Let me hear from others. Yes, Mary, Angela, and Immaculate. Mary, Angela? Teacher, Angela. Holy Communions. I mean, Come again. Holy communion strengthens one's faith in God. Yes, it strengthens our spiritual. Yes, Mary. Yes. Come again, Mary. It strengthens one's faith in God. It strengthens our faith strengthens in God. Very good. It strengthens our faith in God. In other words, before you go to the priest to receive the bread and wine, what is required of us as Christians? You must first pray. You must first forgive all those people maybe that you have problems with. You must purify yourself. So in other words, it strengthens our spirit, our spiritual life. It is a spiritual nourishment. Thank you. People are typing. It is a spiritual nourishment. Bobri is asking, what do you mean by spiritual nourishment? Bobri is asking. People are saying it is a spiritual nourishment. What does it mean? Let me hear a good Christian now to explain to him. When we talk about spiritual nourishment, he's confused. What does it mean? Members, what does it mean when we say spiritual nourishment? Yes, button such. Let me see button such his hand now is down. Then Joseph Stephen. Joseph. Yes, Joseph. Joseph Stephen. Let me go to this good girl, Maria. Maria Judith. Maria Judith. Chirava Elizabeth is saying, I think it means repeating, repeating, repeating. Maria Judith, do you have the answer? What is spiritual nourishment?
repentance. Very good, Chilawa Elizabeth is saying repentance. The other time she had typed repeating. Now she's saying it means repentance, spiritual nourishment. What does it mean? When we get Holy Eucharist, we get spiritual nourishment. And someone is saying, what is that? Yes, Joy. Yes, Joy? Joy? Could I have had a challenge? People put up their hands, I pick on them, but I cannot get a feedback. Maybe let me keep reading from what you type. Patience is saying, tell us remember what God did for us on the cross. That one is answering the importance of Holy Eucharist. But when we talk about spiritual nourishment, when we take Holy Communion, some people are saying it gives us spiritual nourishment. And what does it mean? In other words, as Christians, we grow spiritually. Our spiritual nature in us grows stronger. Our belief in Jesus And you feel like you are, you are God's what? God's child. You are following up to his son's steps, Jesus Christ. So in other words, it brings you closer to God. Remember we said the word communion means coming together. The togetherness of Christians and God. So when we celebrate or when we share the Holy Communion, it nourishes, it improves on our spiritual belief in us as Christians. So in other words, Princess is saying, spiritual nourishment means the cleansing of our hearts from sin. You are like you are cleansed. You are like you are now walking with Jesus Christ. That is our belief as Christians. So generally, Holy Communion is very important in our lives as Christians because it gives us the spiritual nourishment of our bodies and it reminds us of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. That is the importance of Holy Communion. Members, thank you, you have contributed. Then I also had a question of how is it done in your church? How is it done in your church? People, you can type how it is done in your church, but from what I displayed in my picture at the beginning, that is how it is done in many churches. It is administered by a priest and the person to receive it must be confirmed. That person must be confirmed and must first cleanse or repent of our sins before you receive the Holy Communion. Some people are saying they don't practice then those are not Christians, but I'm saying to Christians, we receive Holy Communion and it must be administered by someone who is maybe a priest, a bishop, or any other person who has the power to do it. So members, next, as Christians, we believe in that, that Jesus Christ instituted that practice of Holy Eucharist. I want us to go straight to the Bible. I've prepared for you a picture. I've prepared
prepared for you a picture. And I want you to look at that picture. I've prepared for you a picture. I want you to look at that picture displayed. Members, can you see the picture displayed on the screen? We have a picture. Can you see that picture? Can you see that picture? Picture, there is a picture displayed. Let me see how many people can be able to see what is displayed on the screen. Shilabe Elizabeth, can you see that picture? Yes. Yes, Shilabe can see. People are putting up their hands. Therefore, they can see. When you read Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, when you read Matthew, that picture is got from Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 30. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to Matthew. Chapter 26, verse 26 to 30. What is there? When we read that chapter of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 26, I don't know how many people have Bibles, but when you read there, it talks about the Lord's Supper. Yes, Elizabeth wants to read for us. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, let me see. Elizabeth wanted to read for us Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. Who is ready to read for us? Let me ask Melody. Melody, do you have a Bible? Melody, do you have a Bible with you? Yes? Yes, teacher. You read for us Matthew 26, verse 26. It says, yes. First read the heading. The, the Lord's Supper. Yes. While they was eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave yes. it to his disciples, saying, take it and eat. This is my body. Yes. Then he took the cup, gave, it, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, yes. drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for many, for the forgiveness of, of sins. Yes. I tell you, I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now, from now on until the day when I drink it anew with you in the Father's kingdom. Yes. When they had sung a hymn, they went out into the olives of the into the Mount of Olives. Thank you, thank you, Melody. When we refer to the Bible, that's where we find that when Jesus celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples, this is how this act of Eucharist. This is how the Christians 
came to believe in this act of holy communion. Jesus with his disciples, they shared the last supper. Jesus was celebrating this because he was preparing for his death. He knew. Therefore, he had the last supper with his disciples. In other words, it was like a farewell party with his disciples. And what did he do when we read Matthew chapter 26, verse 26? Even it is not only in Matthew, even in Mark chapter 14, verse 22, even in Luke chapter 22, verse 17, they all talk about the Last Supper. So that picture I have displayed, it simply shows what took place at the Lord's Supper. That picture shows when Jesus shared the last meal with his disciples. And you have heard that he used bread. He blessed bread and wine. And he simply told the disciples, he took a cup, gave thanks to God and gave it to them. What did he say? Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood, which seals God's covenant. So members, what you see here in the picture, this is when Jesus shared the last supper with his disciples. Jesus shared this last supper with his disciples because he was like preparing them. He knew what was going to happen. So he had with them the last supper. And this is where as Christians we stand and believe that really holy communion is very important. He gave them bread. He gave them wine to symbolize his bread. He gave them bread to symbolize his body. This is where we stem as Christians to believe in holy communion. And I told you, it is in Matthew, it is in Mark chapter 14, and it is in Luke chapter 22. So members, from what we have read in the Bible, I have questions for you. I want you to go and you read it on your own and then answer these four questions. You go and read that chapter and then answer those four questions. I want you to describe the event in the picture, explain what took place during that event of Hori of the Last Supper, then what happened immediately after that event, and then you make the summary of the whole event. All the answers are going to be got from that chapter we have read. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 to 30. Thank you members. I want us to stop here. And I'm going to send everything to our Google Classroom. So you can refer there and then answer those questions. Thank you. Thank you very much.